Hello and welcome to your last video of the course. This is chapter 14, Performance Measures, and we are in learning objective number four, identifying and calculating ratios that are used to analyze profitability. How profitable are we? How are we doing? All right, we have a bunch of different profitability ratios. Here are the examinable ones not struck out. We have our gross profit and net profit, otherwise known as profit margin. ROA, return on assets. ROE, return on equity. Uh, we have our basic EPS or earnings per share. And we have our price earnings ratio. Uh, some financy, fun, stock market items here. All right. So profit margins. Uh, this is the same if we're looking at gross profit margin or profit margin. Remember, it just relates to where on the income statement are we right after revenues less cost of goods sold? If so, that's profit, gross profit margin. Or are we after operating costs? That is our net profit or profit margin. So here's where we take our net income and divide it by net sales. And if we were looking at gross profit, we would be looking at gross profit divided by net sales. It's a ratio of saying, hey, cool, um, how are you doing? It's saying what amount of profit or gross profit is generated by each dollar of sale. So for example, uh, last year, I believe it was uh, Loblaw, um, Sobeys, and Metro. Uh, they ranged between uh, 2 and 3% profit margin which meant for every dollar of banana that they sold or whatever, that they kept uh, 3% in, or for, me, uh, for every dollar of bananas that they sold uh, or pick a, pick a product, that they kept 3 cents. It's because they had a, one, a 2 to 3% um, profit margin. So uh, they, that is referred to as a very slim profit margin, uh, which is means that how they make their money is on volume. It's because, yeah, three cents on every dollar isn't a lot, but three cents on one, one, uh, 100, oh my gosh, 100 billion? 100 billion dollars of sales, yeah. Um, between the three of them, that's where you make your money. All right. Um, Let's look at return on assets. So ROA, return on assets, is where we see net income divided by average total assets. And so what this tells you is, given how many assets you have, how hard are your assets working for you? What are you generating from your assets? Uh, so in general, higher is better, because it means that you're doing, uh, you have a higher net income versus the amount of assets that you have. So I'm going to say generally, because it could be that you sold all your assets towards uh, the end of one year and you artificially inflated this number. So in general, higher is better. It means that your assets are, you know, bringing in more net income. They're pulling, pulling above their weight. They're doing well. All right. We also have return on equity, ROE, or return on common shareholders equity. And so what this looks like at is it looks at net income minus preferred dividends declared. Remember a couple of chapters ago, preferred dividends are dividends that are given to um, preferred shareholders. Uh, equity shareholders, common shareholders, those are the people that get uh, the residual value of the company. Those are the people that are like, they're in it to win it. They, they're, you know, they don't get anything unless the company actually makes money. Whereas these preferred shareholders are a little bit, um, a little bit fancier. Uh, they're a little bit more like debt sometimes, and they get, uh, they don't get the residual rewards of the company, but they also get a little bit higher preference. So they are not common shareholders' equity, which means we have to minus their dividends declared from the net income. So once we have that amount, net income less preferred dividends. We divide it by the average common shareholder's equity, and um, we get to see what our ROE is. And in general, higher is typically better. A couple more, and then we'll do an activity. Basic price, uh, pardon me, basic EPS 
this is where um, you'll see this on the face of the financials. Uh, typically, uh, EPS is, oh, it's fabulous. Um, this tells us for every common share, how much net income did you earn? So what is like, for my 100 shares, like, you know, you just times this by 100, like, what are you, what are you doing for me? And it helps you kind of realize, hey, is this investment paying off? Is this going to be a long-term, like, profitable uh, play for me as an investor? So you take the net income and minus preferred dividends declared, because again, those are like fancy dividends that are not related to me as um, understanding how my company is doing. And then you average, you divide them by the weighted average number of common shares. Um, that's also known as WAXO, we did average number of common shares, um, and that is something that we'll talk about if you take intermediate financial accounting uh, with me, IFA2, uh, otherwise known as COM3111, uh, that we get into some kind of complicated, uh, not complicated, but like, you know, common shares, they are issued and repurchased uh, throughout the year. They, we need to figure out what the average number is, but we more than average number, we need to find out what the weighted average number is for common shares. Um, this is not comparable between companies because um, common shares... Anyways, um, I, I'll explain a bit more into it, but it really is just saying, hey, for each one of your common shareholders, um, what is the net income that relates to that one individual share for that, um, for that time period? All right, lastly, we will look at our price to earnings ratio. And now this looks at our outside uh, metrics. So what is the uh, capital markets? What are they saying our company is worth? And then what are our actual earnings? So that's when we take um, what is the market saying that we're making? What are we saying that we're making per share? And showing um, a relative uh, comparison between the two. So higher means um, that they're bet the market is like, hey, you're doing. we think you're going to do better than you currently are. And they expect favorable profitability in the future. And lower means the investors are kind of discounting your company. They're like, hey, we know that you're making X amount per share, but we don't believe that you will in the future, so we're going to put a discount on you. All right, uh, so this one's kind of fun because it, again, brings in that external um, market price, um, and we know that markets are influenced by more than just what's going on in your company, um, like lots of macroeconomic factors that can make this share price go up or down, and that's why a lot of investors will look at misinformation um, in the market. So they might be looking at where they would expect this to be higher than it really is, and if um, this price earnings ratio is lower than, um, and if the investor feels like, hey, they have information to know that that's a mistake then that might be an indicator that they would buy underpriced assets. All right, last activity. Uh, so give this video a pause. And when you come back, I want you to have filled out for this column A um, if you believe um, that it's a liquidity ratio, a solvency ratio, or profitability. And then I want you to say in column B that in general, whether higher results are generally considered to be better worse or who knows um, when comparing um, a company to itself and its performance in the prior year. So give this a shot. I've crossed out, I'm um, in a very steady hand, um, non-examinable items because we don't, we invest our time wisely here. Come back and we'll go do a debrief and that'll be that people. All right, talk soon. All right, so our average collection period. This is going to be a liquidity ratio. We're wondering, cool, um, how fast are you collecting your AR? How fast are you going to be collecting those current assets, turning them into cash to pay our, um, to help satisfy our current obligations? And in general, um, a higher collection period would be worse. We want this um, collection period to be shorter because it means that you're collecting your total AR relatively quickly. So higher would be worse. All right, um, basic earnings per share. This is a profitability ratio. We just looked at these and we are saying, cool, um, 
individually for each share, how much net income are you generating per share? So in general, higher is going to be better. Current ratio. So this is, again, your liquidity ratio. And this is looking at your total current assets to current liabilities. And in general, higher is better. You definitely want it around that two to one ratio. Uh, anything less than one to one means that you're in trouble. Days in inventory, another liquidity ratio. And this time where you have longer days in inventory, it means your inventory is turning over uh, sl more slowly the more it's um, the more days that it's in inventory, so higher is worse. Debt to total assets. This is a solvency ratio. I don't know why I said A. This is a solvency ratio. And in general, more debt to your assets indicates worse. All right. Uh, so free cash flow. Let's just... Free cash flow. So this is a solvency ratio, or in, but it's our ratio that's not really a ratio. How much cash flow do you have left um, after paying out all your dividends and, and whatnot? And in general, higher is going to be better. How much cash after stuff that you have to pay, um, your debt obligations and your dividends, higher is generally better. Gross profit margin, this is a profitability ratio. And in general, the higher gross profit, then the better. Better. All right. And inventory turnover. So this is your liquidity ratio. And in general, the, high, the more higher your inventory turnover is, the better. Because if you have a really high inventory uh, turnover ratio, it means that you're turning over your total inventory several more times during the year, and so it's better. Notice that this is the inverse of your days in inventory, because here we're saying how many days are you in inventory, whereas here we're saying how many times per year do you turn it over. All right, uh, looking at our price earnings ratio, um, this is a profitability uh, ratio, and higher is uh, normally better. Uh, we are going to say non-determinable at this amount because we there's a lot of things that we can't really control here because uh, it is based on that market um, market item. So, and we're looking at it um, when asking how are they doing between the companies. Um, we don't really know because we can't really compare one company's um, EPS to another. All right, um, next one is our <coughs> profit margin, pardon me. And our profit margin is going to be, sorry, I'm like trying to line these up. Our profit margin is, maybe if I make it a little bigger, let's make it a little bigger. Okay. Oh, no, that made it go the wrong way. Undo, undo, okay, whatever. Our profit margin uh, is going to be a profitability ratio in, in general. Um, higher is going to be better. All right, similar to our gross profit margin above. Our receivables um, ratio is our liquidity. And uh, in general, the more that we turn over receivables, the better this is going to be. Uh, we want AR to turn over several times throughout the year. Um, and now we have our return on assets, a profitability ratio, and in general, the higher the return on our assets that we have, the better it is for us. Similarly, our return on common shareholders equity, again, profitability, and in general, higher the better. Uh, times interest earned. This is going to be a solvency ratio. How are you doing as far as net income uh, before interest in taxes relative to the amount of interest that you are owing? And so in general, the higher is going to be better. Lastly, we have our working capital, which is our liquidity ratio. Again, my apologies, like it's just barely lining up, but if you're following, then it should be okay. Um, and this is the liquidity ratio, um, 
and in general, higher is going to be better. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you so, so much for a great term. I really wish you all the best in your studying for your final exam and for the rest of your undergrad. So take care and hopefully we'll talk soon.